Hey everyone, uh, Jeff Nash here from Rinks Around the League here in the Rink studio. I've got some unopened hockey cards and today I'm going to be trading cards with Bruce Bennett. I'm ready. Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, Bruce Bennett is here, a uh, legendary NHL photographer and uh, I thought it'd be fun. I have these unopened 1991-92 hockey cards that haven't been opened and um, I thought it'd be fun for Bruce and I to kind of open up some packs, see who we get. But before we open our packs, uh, Bruce, maybe just give viewers on the photos on the hockey cards. You've done a little bit of, of stock photography that you give to, to card companies to put on the cards. What's, what's kind of the process involved? Anything unique? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, in the early days, uh, obviously, I guess we started with just Opeachy was one of the first ones, and Tops, and then the big boom for my company before Getty Images bought me. We're going back to Bruce Bennett Studios days. The big boom is when all the trading card companies came in, Fleer and Donruss and ProSet, Upper Deck, um, and you had so many card companies looking for the basically the same images. And where our company excelled was selling what you call stock photography, which is images we go out, we shoot, and we hope that someone will, ev will eventually want those images. Where my company excelled and where we pushed our business towards was if a guy played one minute or three minutes or 10 minutes, we were the company that had those images. Mm. And so we <clears throat> basically were well set up for the influx of trading card companies who were granted licenses but then needed stock photography to fill out their sets. And they obviously worked so far in advance that they, most of them didn't want to wait for an October start date. Mm. They needed photos before season started so that they could Bruce, produce cards for the upcoming season. One small question I've always wondered is, I've always been amazed at like, some of them are like, okay, that's a good photo. And then some of them are just like really weird photos. Horrible. Like, and yeah. so, I mean, is that a situation where like, that's the only one they could find of that player or? Um, you know, in some cases that's true, uh, where where quantity would be limited and, and right. you know, we'd get a call for a, a rookie who had played a couple of games or we, maybe we shot him once and we had three images and right. you get what you get, yeah. you know, we're the only guys with him, so you've got, you know, you've got it. So let's crack into it. So we'll go one pack at a time. There's two two packs mm -hmm. beside you here. Um, so these are OPG cards and maybe just read out who you have who you got. Listen, I'm not eating this gum. This... <laughs> well, I, mine came in two pieces. Is, that, is yours in oh. multiple pieces? Uh, no, mine is one solid piece. Oh. But oh, it's, it's stuck there. Oh. It's stuck to some guy. Yeah. Well, I'll read out who Good. I've got first. I've got uh, Mike McHugh of apparently the, the Sharks, but he's in a North Stars jersey. Yeah. Uh, okay. Alexander McGilney, uh, Mark Pedersen, Kevin Todd, Brian Bellows, Peter Svoboda, uh, Rich Sutter, Ken Hodge, wow. super rookie. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, Gary Lehman and Ton Tom McKeg not Tom McKegney. Kegney. Oh, Sorry. Tony McKegney. Sure. Tony, or, so I said Suitcase. Tom. Tony. Yeah, Tony. he played on like 12 teams. That guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, tough guy. I love that guy. Yeah, loved him. Let's see who you played with. Yeah, Sabres, Nordiques, Stars, Rangers, Blues, Red Wings, Nordiques, Hawks. How many is that? Uh, that's Eight like teams? 16 teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count. Um, yeah, there were probably 10 more teams after that, too. Yeah, I'll but, have to look them yeah. up. Wow, crazy. So who, uh, who did you manage to get? Okay, well, I got Igor Vlanov. You all remember he's in the uh, Russian Hall of Fame. Oh, There's yeah. no doubt. Never heard of him. <laughs> uh, Paul Cavallini, sure, with St. Louis. Oh, I love this guy too, Dave Gagne, Minnesota North Stars. I mean, that's a strobe shot. I can tell by the lighting, yeah. you know, very nicely done, cropped well. Oh, Winnipeg Jets, Brent Ashton, another guy who played on a ton of different teams. Murray Barron, Philadelphia Flyers. That's probably one of my shots because I can tell by the, the lighting. You know, okay. you look at the certain lighting patterns, how the strobes hit the jersey. Right, okay. Philadelphia home shot. So uh, I'll, I'll take credit for that. There's no photo credits on these. No, they never no, did that. No. Dave Christian standing still. What's the point? 
uh, Bob Kudelski. This is this is the kind of shot, like hockey pose one A. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, use up your your videotape by telling you a story about that hockey pose. Sure. Uh, each year, uh, All Star Game. That's one of the poses you would do with the players. Right. Throwback to the old days. The guy would stand in front of you and he just pose with a hockey stick. Uh, sometimes we do it on the ice. Sometimes you'd even do it in a studio. So we're in Chicago, and Chris Jelios, who you know, big personality and a lot of fun, and just a fun guy to be around. And we had done the poses with all the players either earlier that day or in the studio. And there I am sitting in the corner, and you know, I've got this look. You know, it's there. You know, people kind of recognize me a little bit. So I'm sitting there in the corner, and. You know, it's all-star game, players are getting ready for a face-off, and Chris Chelios looks over to me and he goes... <laughs> and he goes into hockey pose 1A. <laughs> and, and I start laughing, and all the fans in the area start laughing. And there's no way to explain it to anybody at that time, but yeah. it, was just, it was just a funny moment. But, you know, any hockey photographers out there, don't, don't do that ever again. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. It's done. Uh, sorry, Ed Bilfour hated the strobes. Remember that well of him. But, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Chicago, in Pittsburgh, we all had to turn our strobes off. Oh, wow. Because what happens is at times, you know, players, like, they need something to blame. Yep. Special goaltenders, hey, that strobe got in my eyes. Right. Um, so we all had to shut down our strobes until the NHL could kind of figure it out and go, yeah, it's, you know, when your mind wanders a little bit in a game and you kind of look up at the rafters and that strobe hits you in the face, yeah, that hurts. Yeah. And so that could most definitely throw you off. Right. Who else you got? Oh, a favorite, Essa Tikkanen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, personality. The Great guy. And Sylvain Lefebvre. I did not say that well because my French uh, lessons are well into my past <laughs> or never. Awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's open up the other one here and see, uh, see what we got. By the way, these uh, I've checked the uh, the value of these cards. I think the most valuable card is like a Sergei Fedorov rookie or something, and it's like a dollar. So <laughs> ah, that we're not we're not going to be pulling out any uh, Gretzky yeah. rookie cards with these two. My, my gum, my stick of gum is in one piece, by the way. Okay. Mine my, my has survived. Oh, I got a... Uh, oh, a logo card. A logo card. Those are hot. So when you take these photos... No, I'm joking. Uh, who now I that got? logo card, you go right into your bicycle spokes. Yeah, to make, you know, <laughs> there's no reason to keep it. Uh, I got Trent Yanni, Mike Vernon, with a looks like a warm-up bench Mike. shot. Uh, Teppo Newman, good. Uh, Mike Sillinger, uh, Troy Crowder, uh, Brad Marsh. I don't. Did he wear a helmet when he played, or is this maybe a warm-up shot? This you is know, the age where some yeah. players still did. I think he helmets. did a couple of years without. Yeah. And then and then with after the brain damage, he put the helmet on. Well, for younger viewers, they actually did. Like I think Craig McTavish was the last one to not wear yeah. a helmet. They used to actually not wear helmets. Uh, Valerie Kamens Kamensky. Good. And uh, Dave Chitkowski. Yikes. Yes. Barely remember him, and he was an Islander. He was an Islander. Let's see. Uh, he played. Well, two years and oh, 50, 90 games. So, mm -hmm. oh, he's from Edmonton too. Local, local, local kid. So, I don't know who that and guy is. Neither of us know the guy. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Who you got? Okay, I start again with a Russian because that's a theme for me. Oh. I start with Yuri Klyalov, uh, Chimilov, Chimilov, <laughs> Central Red Army. Uh, Jocelyn Lemieux, one of the lost Lemieux brothers. Claude Lemieux's brother, Jocelyn. Oh, it's a uh, whaler goalie, Peter Sidorkowski. Yeah, something World like that. Sidowitz. Sidorkowitz, yeah. You got it. <laughs> uh, spell check. Yeah. Uh, Garth Butcher, famous St. Louis Blue. Another stupid headshot of uh, Darren Poopa. Oh, yes. It's, it's nice to see the helmets. It might, it might, be, uh, it might, it might be the same. Looks the same. Where's my Mike Vernon? Well, he's looking from the other side, so yeah, <laughs> it might be the same game. <laughs> Continental Airlines Arena was a great place because it was photo boxes right next to the benches, mm -hmm. and you'd be able to, especially in warm-ups, you would just knock off all your tops cards at that point and right. peachy cards. Easy place to score that stuff. And then we go down to Philadelphia for Bill Armstrong, you know, Philadelphia strobe shot. 
Gino Cavallini, uh, that's a double. I already have a duplicate shot because oh. I had him in the last pack. Nice. So I'm going to bring back, bring this back to the dealer yeah. and complain. <laughs> and try to get your five cents yeah. worth. Yeah. Mike McNeil on uh, Quebec Nordiques. Don't remember him at all. A side shot, Mike uh, Kershaw, uh, Kershaw Niski. Fun guy, shows up at Gretz or used to show up at Gretzky Fantasy Camp every year and so great with the campers, great personality. And yeah. Just a, a, I mean, what a joy to be around that guy. He, uh, so we interviewed him for our Farewell Rexall series. He came back for yeah. the, the big hurrah. And uh, I just remember, like you said, very personable, very charismatic guy. But shaking his hand, oh my god. Like, my hand just like just swallows up, like just yeah. monster hands. You're like, yeah. I wouldn't want to deal with that back in the day. Yeah. And the last one is Sean Bird, Detroit Red Wing classic, standing still. With no helmet on. With no helmet. Yeah. Almost no hair. Yeah. You know. Awesome. No keepers. No keepers. Well, you know, I'll just have to try again with my next guest to see if I can track down that one, uh, one dollar. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for playing along. Uh, it's good to get some insight on on how the photos are are taken and how they're kind of sent uh, to the card companies. And uh, I won't hold against I won't hold this against you not chewing the gum. Maybe I'll I'll con some sucker into trying this. Uh, I'm not opposed to trying it. I don't think kids give it to your kids. Yeah. <laughs> See how that works out. Yeah. Well, the scary thing is they probably. <laughs> Do you have any more of that hockey card going? <laughs> like, uh, no, no. Remember the last one that was just like sawdust powder in your mouth? Probably. I have no idea how that's going to handle. But, anyways, that wraps it up for trading cards with Bruce Bennett. Thanks for coming, man. See ya.